Good morning, everyone. I'll call the Drainage District Board of Directors meeting to order. We'll start with a roll call to establish quorum. Good morning, David Fuentes, Precinct 1. Everardo Villarreal, Precinct 3. Richard Cortez, County Judge, that constitutes a quorum of three. Mr. Cassine, would you please lead us in prayer? Certainly will. Good morning, Judge, Commissioners. Good morning, everyone. All right, let us pray. Father God, we continue to seek your clarity and your peace over all that's occurring in our country today. We know you're with us and for us as we gather to seek your counsel. We continue to pray for the judge and four commissioners you've appointed to lead this great county. We pray for our mayor, school board members, city council, police chiefs, district attorney, sheriff, judges, and all who serve local communities. Strengthen them with wisdom and grace for the heavy burdens they carry. May they continue to manage their teams and projects with love. Keep their hearts pure and their eyes turned to your face as they work in the best interest of the people they're called to serve. We continue to pray for all the first responders and their families. We continue to lift them up to you. We ask for your grace, love, and mercy, and wisdom be granted to the doctors and nurses dealing with the ill. And we ask for your hand of peace and comfort over them as well. We lift up to you all those that are battling illnesses. We continue to pray for all, and we ask for your healing hand over them. Provide their families with their peace that you can only bring through your son, Jesus. And we continue to praise you for the healing that's come through you. We pray for the souls that have passed, and may, be at, may they be at peace, resting at your side, Father God. We pray for strength over all that have lost someone. May your strength carry them through all, and your grace, love, and mercy be over them. Today, Father God, we pray for the families affected by the tragic events in Uvalde. We pray for the peace and comfort over the survivors and their families, the first responders, and the families that lost a loved one, Father God. We pray for strength and unity over our state and country. Lord, we believe in you and all that you have revealed for our salvation. We hope in you because of your overwhelming mercy. Every single act of yours on this earth demonstrates your love for us. Your ascent into heaven before the eyes of the apostles inspires us to hope of one day joining you there. We love and wish you to make the prog little progress. We have the same struggles and difficulties every day. We are overwhelmed by the evil we see in the world, and it can be hard to see your victory in many places. In many families and homes, as well, Father God, give us the hope that we need to keep seeking your will in all things. Give us an un unwavering confidence in your victory over sin and evil in our lives and in the world. Scripture continues to remind us, Father God, that the more we seek you, the more we will find you. May we seek you in everything we do, and may we always work as working for you. And we ask all this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Do we have anybody to sign up for open forum? Mr. Magnus. Mr. Magnus. There are zero participants, Thank sir. You, sir. No participants? No, sir. No participants. Okay. Next, we'll go to the approval of the consent agenda. Yes, sir. Consent agenda, we have the approved check register, discharge permits, and other items that have been vetted by my team, sir. Everything is in order. We do recommend approval. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve. One in favor say aye. 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 The motion carries. Item, uh, item 5A, 5A, discussion and updates at race stock condition 1, 2022 hurricane, uh, hurricane season preparedness and pump mobilization. Just to, to advise the board and, and the public that we have begun already, uh, you know, hurricane season is tomorrow, start of hurricane season for our area. We've already started mobilizing our, 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 our uh, equipment to the sites, pump systems that we have in place and everything, pr primarily on the, the levee side. Um, you know, we had a preparedness this last week, so it went well. And then obviously we had the little event uh, that, that came through our area. I know the western side was hit pretty hard from seven inches all the way to the eastern side, about five and a half to, uh, to three inches or so. Um, so, you know, we, we are already in, in that mode. Um, today, tomorrow we'll start issuing or allowing our supervisors to take their trucks home as well. Uh, we, we traditionally do that during uh, hurricane season so they can be the first responders that we do get we hit with an event. Uh, my, you know, my office will be co uh, communicating with the judge's office and the, and the commissioner's office if there is an event that takes place. And, you know, we appreciate uh, the board support and communicating with the cities. A lot of times, you know, we got a lot of cities out there. and uh, The best uh, means of communication is from my office uh, through your office and then through the cities as well. We get a lot of requests for assistance and things like that during events. And, and we have found uh, historically that it's best to go through the elected official offices and communicate that with the cities when they're requesting assistance and so forth. And we help support the precincts as well. You know, our primary goal, obviously, to make sure our main system is, is operating at optimal capacity, uh, our Panchita structure, everything else. And then, you know, secondary, we step in and obviously assist 
lateral, uh, you know, help to cities, counties, uh, to the precincts, and so forth. So, um, just you know, let you know we are um, already in, in, in that preparedness mode and and moving forward uh, with that. I don't know if any questions or anything. I do. So, Judge, just real quick, uh, tomorrow is hurricane season, right? The official start June first, uh, and as it pertains to preparedness, we have a construction project at the Anaquitas. Uh, site in Mercedes, which is along the IBWC. We're going to have a groundbreaking tomorrow. We're doing it ceremonially. The work has already begun, but we wanted to do it on the start of hurricane season so that we could uh, kind of use it as a uh, way to communicate not only the, the work that the county is doing to help prepare for hurricanes, uh, but also to officially get people notice that, that hurricane season is upon us and we need to take precautions to get ready um, so that we don't get caught, you know, unprepared. So yes. I just want to, we'll, we'll send out the press release a little bit later, but it goes hand in hand with our preparedness and the start of hurricane season. That's correct. And, and to continue with that thought, you know, we do have a burn ban yes. in place, uh, and we are approaching hurricane season, so is it better for us to burn the brush uh, <laughs> or leave it? Uh, what, what are, what are the, the, the precincts doing? Would that have anything? Well, I believe that you can still get a permit and uh, and call and, and uh, see if the weather permits uh, to burn that particular day. Uh, I know that we have been accepting the brush at our sites that, that people can uh, bring them in. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, I mean, just go get a permit and I would recommend maybe to do burn. And, and, and that's really where I was going. That I think we, I think we need to notify the public that even though we do have a, a burn plan, that you can get a permit, you, you can burn something responsibly, and we prefer for you maybe to do that so we can get rid of get rid of all this stuff and not have it as a missile out there if the hurricane hits. But I'll let I'll let the precincts work on that. Yes, sir. Okay. Great. Um, item B, if I may, sir. Um, request and approval of an interlocal agreement and by and between Dow County District Number One and the Dow County Head Start program as it relates to civil engineering services and, cons and consultation related to the planning process for the Head Start outdoor learning environment and discovery classroom project pending final legal review. We're serving as site civil engineers planning the site for for the Head Start. So yeah, we appreciate that motion yes. to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you, Adam C. Request and approval of the local agreement by and between Dow County District 1, Dow County Precinct 3, and the City of Palm Beach as it relates to the Tierra Linda Drain Improvement Project pending final legal review. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you, Adam D. Request and approval of the local agreement by and between Dow County District 1 and the City of West as it relates to the maintenance rights and operations of the control structure identified license number LSFG288 pending final legal review. So this is the one on the Project 21, I believe, the structure that goes uh, just south of, uh, I guess, uh, FM 491, mile 10 in that area. Mm -hmm. um, one of the projects that we have with the FIF, and it's also a bond, uh, uh, that structure, when we submitted the application to IBWC, it was permitted to, to Wessico. We spoke with Wessico. They were very receptive in us taking over since we're going to improve the structure and we'll be maintaining it. So this will work towards getting that done, sir. Perfect. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. I have a question of approval for Dow County District Number 1 to perform improvements to existing outfall in Dow County District Number 1, base lateral uh, pertaining to Frontera Energy Center for $19,073.42 and an approved resolution clearing improvement service of public purpose. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. I have a Request an approval of the utility relocation cost system for Mellon and Hunt Engineering for $135,000. $880 that relates to the RMA 365 tollway the outfall drainage parcel OD4 uh, ACD number one will seek reimbursement from the Alcantara Regional Mobility Authority pursuant to the interlocal agreement dated November 17, 2020. So Motion this is all approve. reimbursable to us. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Adam G. One request an approval to accept CSP response and award a negotiated construction contract including the best final offer for the project Mid Valley Airport Ditch 18B Drainage Improvements 2018 Bond Referendum Project Number 19, contract number CACDD 1-22020531, Tomorrow LLC, and the total amount $1,218,969.71. As approved for the negotiations by the Board of Directors, May 17, 2022, agenda number 
857 Legal Review and Compliance House Bill 1295. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item two, pursuant to Texas Logan Code 262031 and interest expanded projects progress, requesting authority approval drain district general manager to execute change orders that involve an increase or decrease in the cost of fifty thousand or less, and in no event to exceed the change order statutory limits, the original contract price may not be increased by by eighteen percent or more without consent of the contractor. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you, Adam H. <coughs> requesting authority to advertise and approval of request for bids, packets requiring specifications. <laughs> And plans, et cetera, developed by project engineer ICE Engineering for Dow County District Number One Project Repair and Reconstruction of Main Flood Water Channel Weir Number Four, located in Willis County, RFP Number ACDD One Twenty Two Zero Thirty Zero Six Twenty Two RFP, including the advertisement of the project and the events in order to receive and are rejected. And project still required. So, motion to approve. Second. We have a motion, a second to approve. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item I, request an approval of change order number seven, reflect an increase in the amount of sixty thousand one hundred nine and thirty six cents, and ninety additional construction calendar days in connection with contract CCDD one twenty zero zero two zero two eleven Mission Inlet Drainage Improvement Project Section C and F of Boa States Area Drainage Improvements with Council Enterprise LLC, recommended project engineer LNG. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, item J one. Uh, through three, if I may judge, uh, approval, item one, approval of uh, payment invoice number 03-2022 RD in the amount of 15776 and 44 cents in Dow County Precinct number four for reimbursement of equipment labor force pay period 3-2022. Item two, approval of payment of invoice number 0406-2022 RS in the amount of 27327 <clears throat> from Dow County Precinct four for the reimbursement of equipment labor force for pay period four 2022 and item three approval of payment of invoice number 0506 2022 rd in the amount of 102 thousand eight fifty eight twenty nine cents for that kind of precinct number four for reimbursement of equipment labor force for pay periods five and six 2022. motion approved second all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. motion carried thank you 6a request and approval of local agreement and by and between Dow County Drainage Number One, the City of Far, as it relates to South Far Lateral and Las Minas Drainage Improvement Project, pending final legal review. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Item Six B, request an authority to advertise an approval of request for bid packets requiring specifications and plans, etc., developed by Project Engineer B to Z Engineering LLC for the Dow County Drainage Number One Project, South I Road West Drainage Improvement, 2018 Bond Referendum Project Number 33, RFP Number ACD 12020802 ESZ. Including the advertisement of the project in the event, no response to receiving or rejecting the project is still required. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Item C request an authority to advertise and approval to request bids, packet requirements, specification plans, et cetera, developed by project engineer BZ Engineering LLC, Dow County Precinct Number One Project, South I Road. Uh, East Side Drainage Improvement 2018 Bond uh, Referendum. Project number 33, RFP number ACDD 12020290622 ESZ, including the reputation of the project, the event notice sponsor received and rejected, and project is still required. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Item D, request an authority to advertise and approval of procurement packet, i.e., legal notice, specifications, bid page, et cetera, as attached here too, for the purchase of one vertical axial mixed flood. Pump for Highway 281 FM 20 FM 88 2018 Bond Referendum Project Number Eight RFP Number ACDD 12023106 ESZ, including the rear outside center of the project. Uh, in the in the event bids are rejected and no bids are received, the project is still required. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Item E, request and approve the closing documents parcel 13-7 as it relates to project 13 of the 2018 drainage bond program with Dalgo Drain and authority for the chairman of the board to execute document subject final legal review. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item F, request and approve change of number two, the price of an increase in the amount of 200, uh, excuse me, 328,637.20 and 120 additional construction calendars. In connection with contract number CA City D120 00907 South Lateral Drain Improvements Phase 1, McCall Road to San Juan Road, 2018 Bond Referendum Project Number 34, with Castle Enterprise LLC, as recommended project engineer, LNG, Sub Compliance House Bill 1295. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. And just for the record, this is additional work that we're doing uh, <coughs> to address some uh, situational, some ish flooding in some uh, neighborhoods in that area south of the South Lateral. Uh, so this additional work on top of what we're already investing in that area. Um, 
G1 approval of payment of invoice number 0406-2022-RS in the amount of $5,261.51 from Medallo County Precinct 4 for reimbursement equipment labor force pay period 6, 2022. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. In item 2, approval of application payment number 8 in the amount of $74,177.33 for Morwell LLC pending concession contract CCD 120 mile 9 uh, mile 9 North and FM 1015, package 2, uh, project engineer, half and associates, in order we recommend approval. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Item 3, approval of application payment number 11 in the amount of $704,000. 974 and 94 cents for Morewell LLC between construction contracts, CACDD 120, 0390825, Mile 9 North, and FM 1015, Package 1A, Project Engineer, Half and Associates. Recommend approval. Motion to approve. Second. All okay. in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. And then Item 4, approval of application payment number 5 in the amount of 82,206 for Morewell LLC between construction contracts, CACDD 120, 0410812, Sunflower Drain, Project Engineer, Segui. Everything's in order. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carried. We do have closed session, Judge. Okay, pursuant to subchapter D of chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code, we'll be retiring to closed session to discuss items listed in code sections 551.072, 74, and 71. Do I have a motion to do so? Motion made. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. I've got 946. Closed session, we do have some action items to take. Sorry for the delay. We have yes, a lot of things to discuss. Judge, closed session, item A, real property. Uh, suggest a motion to authorize Mr. Sassine to proceed with real property acquisition as directed in executive session. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And item, closed session, item 7C1. Uh, ask for a motion for legal counsel to proceed as uh, directed in executive session. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Those are the only action I have I think that concludes all yes, our agenda sir. items. I have a motion to adjourn. Motion made. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Before we begin today's business on the commissioner's court, I would like to take a moment of silence, you know, to honor the people of Uvalde. We mourn with them during this terrible magic, tragic time, and, and we pray that they're healing can begin as soon as possible. So please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you and God bless the people of Uvalde. I now call the the meeting of the Hidalgo County Commissioner's Court to order. We'll start with a roll call to establish quorum. Good morning. David Fuentes, Precinct 1. Eddie Cantu, Precinct 2. Everardo Villarreal, Precinct 3. Ellie Torres, Precinct 4. Richard Cortez, County Judge. That constitutes a quorum. Today, we're honored to have Antonio Castellano. He is a, he was a sergeant at the U.S. Army. His date of service was from 1992 to 2010. He served in Operation Enduring Freedom from 2005 to 2006, and we really thank him for service. Antonio, would you please lead us in the pledge? I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the United States, America, and to the Republic which stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. We're also honored to have today Ms. Clarissa Ramirez. She is with the Women's Infants and Children's. She's a director for the WIC program and she'll be leading us in today's prayer. Clarissa? You're on mute. Good morning. Let us bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you for today and for all our blessings. As we come together as a community in the healing of our country, we ask that you please remain with all of us who have lost loved ones throughout this pandemic, those who have lost their lives while serving our country, 
and with the most recent tragic events that occurred in Uvalde. We ask that you please be with these family members and comfort them as they navigate their own pain and suffering. We pray and ask for healing of those who are sick and protect our vulnerable populations. Please give us the wisdom and the resources, Lord, to provide the best care for our community. As we gather today for Commissioner's Court, we ask that you be with us today and help our leaders in making the best decisions for the residents of Hidalgo County. We continue to ask for your shield of protection of our troops, first responders, healthcare professionals, educators, law enforcement personnel, and all those who have sacrificed so much during this time. Thank you, Lord, for your guidance and inspiration to overcome obstacles and to keep moving forward. In your holy name we pray, amen. Thank you, Clarissa. Thank you. Next, we have the approval of the consent agenda. Judge commissioners, with your permission, I'd like to pull from consent agenda, consent agenda item 7A, one and two. Make a motion to approve the rest of the consent. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Judge commissioners, for the record, with respect to consent agenda uh, 7A, one and two, Commissioner Fuentes will be abstaining from any discussion and or action. That being said, can I have a motion? So move. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Let the record show that Commissioner Fuentes abstained from any action or discussion of those items. Thank you. We have some people sign up for open forum. Mr. Magnus. Yes, first up we have Blanca Villalobos. Ms. Villalobos. And prior to us getting started for open forum, um, I would like to remind the public that they're always welcome to participate in public forum. They need to be familiar with the rules of decorum, which prohibits direct and indirect personal attacks on members of the court or any other county individuals. The comments made should also pertain to county business and cannot be threatening in nature. Buenos días. Me gustaría recordarles que el, al público que siempre serán bienvenidos a participar en el foro abierto. Necesitarán estar familiarizados con el reglamento, el cual prohíbe ata ataques directos o indirectos a miembros de la Corte o a cualquier empleado o persona del condado. Los comentarios hechos también deberán ser relacionados a asuntos o negocios del condado y libres de amenazas. Gracias. Sí. ¿Ya lobos? Mr. Magnus, our next presenter. We have Gerardo Paz. I'm sorry, sir. Gerardo Paz. Mr. Paz. Mr. Paz. Our next presenter, Mr. Magnus. Next up, we have Fern McClurdy. Ms. McClurdy. Ms. McClurdy, there is a three minute time limit. I will advise when there is one minute, and I will start when you start. Commissioners, it is my understanding that the county is considering going to a four day work week. This would make sense because this would make them consistent with our judges at the courthouse. I thought that comment would wake some of you up and uh, as you move through this agenda. Uh, but seriously, commissioners, it is difficult to identify how many of the actions that you t have taken will improve the lives of people of Hidalgo County. 40% of our population lives in poverty and that number is growing. This court has now so $428 million in bonds, most of which has gone to construct the new courthouse in an area that is extremely flood prone. We all know the flood floods because we live here and we have seen it. The last phase of this project is the installation of a 72 inch drain line down the middle of the East University Drive. The estimate construction time is two years, so we already know it's longer than that. Why has there not been an outreach to those businesses that will be destroyed by this action? I submitted a request for public information to ensure that our information concerning this project was correct. And I'm sure uh, now that you know what happened. The Hidalgo County District Attorney sent my request to the State Attorney General to ensure that the disclosure of information concerning a public project would not violate the law. That could never happen because the county is so transparent. The fact is that the county does not want any adverse publicity until after the November election. 
My object is to give businesses more time to consider alternative ways for keeping their businesses alive while this construction is going on. Uh, this is going to be on their front doors. Also, how to handle the value increase by the appraisal district during this construction. I'm sure their property values are going to go up for the next two or three years, even though they're closed. One minute. During a, pre a previous county meeting, there was a presentation using Zoom. It would be wonderful how you uh, advertised it. Our assumption was that the county is gearing up for more families to lose their home and their businesses. This may be a financial ideal, but to us, it shows that you do not care about the people. In your mind, the growth of poverty is good for business. Also today, Valdi, I have nine items on the agenda. 11E, 11F, 11H, 11I, 11J, 20C2, 20C3, 21K2, and 22B. A lot of these four, three or four of them are, again, creating jobs. I've never seen anything like it in my life. So I do have questions. I see that we're giving uh, $60,000 to Mission ISD, and we're giving $100,000 to La Jolla ISD. And Precinct 2 has got a wellness uh, thing that we're going to have an ath uh, athletic, what is it? Um, Hi. And I'd like to know why. Mr. Magnus? Yes, next up we have Juan Rodriguez. Mr. Rodriguez? Rodriguez, there's a three-minute time limit. I'll advise when there's one minute. I'll start when you start, sir. Mi nombre es Juan Rodriguez. Quisiera dirigirme al comisionado Everard. Uh, somos de la colonia del Flaco Chiquito y soy miembro de, de Lupe. Hoy estamos aquí para por el, por el alumbrado de, de la colonia de la que nos hemos que nos hemos visto, que no hemos visto ni, ningún tipo de trabajo al respecto y quisiéramos saber el motivo. Siendo que es, esperamos que estuviera puesto en esta colonia, la gente sale a caminar en las tardes. Y hoy que se vienen ya las vacaciones de los niños, este, también se caminan mucho por esas calles y están completamente oscuras. Y... Y también sabemos que ya desde, desde el medio de octubre ya nos cobraron el pago por ese alumbrado. Y el motivo de hoy es saber y preguntar, y si nos pueden dar una respuesta, por qué no se han iniciado los trabajos, que no se ha visto absolutamente nada en esa colonia. Esa es mi petición. Gracias. Gracias. Good morning, my name is Juan Rodriguez, and I would like to direct or uh, address uh, the commit to Commissioner Everardo. We are here from Colonia El Flaco Chiquito, and I am member of Lupe. We are here today for the public lighting of the Colonia that we haven't seen any type of work being done in this matter, and we would like to know the reason, since we were hoping that they would already be at the Colonia. People go out to walk at this Colonia, and kids go out walking too, and it's completely dark and more so now that they are on vacation. And we know that since October, they started charging us the payment for this public lightning, and I would like to know the answer why no job has, has, no job has been done in this uh, public lightning in this colonia. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Magnus. Next up, Next we, up have we have Arturo Flores. Flores. Mr. Flores. Flores, there's a three-minute time limit. I will advise you when there is one minute, and I will start when you start, sir. Thank you, gentlemen, for giving me this time to speak. Before I start, I want to make an announcement that uh, 
This evening at 6 o'clock at STC College in McAllen, there will be a, a memorial service, a, uh, a honor guard by McAllen PD, and they'll have their uh, bagpipes. This is for Memorial Day, and you're all invited. Thank you for having the public comments at the beginning so we have an audience to listen to us. I want to talk to you, first of all, um, about Dr. Mengele. I want to remind everybody that you should have a copy of the Omega Brief. We presented this to you nine months ago. You should already know what it's about because we've actually uh, recommended that you read it. You can go to theomegabrief.com and you can actually have it read to you while you drink your coffee or eat your lunch. Our friend Edmund Menchaca recorded on this website, theomegabrief.com, and you can see the video of her presented it, presenting it to you nine months ago. COVID is a pandemic, and there's irrefutable, undeniable evidence that in there, in the, COVID, in the Omega Brief, that this is fraud. Are you ready to be accountable when the time comes and were you complicit in this conspiracy? By the way, it's six months until the November election, so we're going to be ready for the next planned variant. Or maybe it's gonna be monkeypox. And you can use that to get out those mules again and all the mail-in ballots. Dr. Joseph Mengele, I'm sorry. It wasn't the concentration camp monster who was responsible for the death of, of our Edinburgh friend, what Ernesto Ramirez Jr. This 14-year-old boy died five days after taking the Pfizer shot here in Edinburgh. This happened a year ago in April 2021. He was one of 28,300 vaccine-caused deaths. So I want to play this music for you for a second. I got this beautiful music from your website, Judge, where you so nicely commemorate the many local COVID-related deaths. I'd like to remind you that you should tell our county residents that they didn't all die of COVID, but with COVID. For example, if somebody dies of a heart attack or cancer and they test them and they happen to have the COVID virus in them, that's counted as a COVID death, not a cancer or heart attack. Mr. Flores, time. Uh, weren't you gonna give me a minute notice? I said a minute. That one minute? No, I, I said a minute. Rule okay. Also. My question is how many people died of the vaccine and not just died of COVID and commemorate those people too. Mr. Magnus. There are no more presenters. Yes. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Thank you. Commissioner Torres, are we ready for your proclamation? Yes. Okay. Yes. We're gonna to move to item 19A. <coughs> Good morning, Judge Commissioners. Dr. Colbertson representing Precinct 4. Number 19A, Agenda Item 85912, requesting approval and presentation of proclamation in honor and recognition of Juneteenth Day. May I read the proclamation? Please. Whereas Juneteenth, or Juneteenth Independence Day commemorates the traditional observance of the end of slavery in the United States and is observed annually on June 19th. And whereas President Abraham Lincoln declared that in giving freedom to the slave, we assure freedom to the free, honorable alike in what we give and what we preserve. We shall nobly save or meanly lose the last best hope of earth. And whereas President Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation on January 1st, 1863, declaring the slaves in Confederate territory free, 
paving the way for the passing of the 13th Amendment, which formally abolished slavery in the United States of America. Pardon me. And whereas President Lincoln correctly believed slavery to be in violation of the principles of the Declaration of Independence and that its abolition represented the new birth of freedom for the United States, and whereas more than two years would pass before the news reached African Americans living in Texas when on June 19, 1865, Union Major General Gordon Granger and his regiment arrived in Galveston and spread the word that slavery had been abolished. And whereas June 19th has a special meaning in the black community and is called Juneteenth, combining the words June and 19th, and has been celebrated by the black community for over 150 years. And whereas Juneteenth is the oldest nationally celebrated commemoration of the ending of slavery. And whereas Juneteenth is the official state of Texas 1980 and federal 2021 holiday and celebrated in Hidalgo County since the early 1900s to honor the legacy of black Americans past and present. And whereas Juneteenth is an important opportunity to honor the principles of the Declaration of Independence and celebrate the achievements and contributions African Americans have made and continue to make in Hidalgo County the state of Texas, and across our nation. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Hidalgo County Commissioner's Court hereby declares June 19, 2022, as Juneteenth and encourages all Hidalgo County residents to come together in the celebration of the freedom legacy of black Americans, their important contributions to the betterment of Texas life, and to reaffirm our commitment to achieve an ever-advancing prosperity for all people. Request approval. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I now present Sabrina Walker to say a few words. Hello, commissioners. I hope everyone is having a good start of your day. I know you have a great job to do. And so um, with that, I will say thank you so much for the presentation of the proclamation. I do want to add that um, we're... <clears throat> Pastor Gatlin and I are with uh, Viva, which is Village in the Valley. Um, it's a nonprofit organization that has started um, to really educate people on um, the black culture, not only the black culture, but other cult cultures that exist in the valley. Um, one of the things that we're going to be doing on June the 11th is we're going to be having an event, and Dr. Guajardo um, from the museum is going to be presenting on the Southern Underground Railroad, which a lot of us are not familiar with at all. Um, we hear the Jackson family, we hear the Weber family, but we don't know that there, there were people who traveled in from Alabama, from Mississippi, coming here um, to, to escape slavery. And um, one generation in, I will tell you, because my kids, I'm, I'm married to a Hispanic man, and uh, my kids um, look, uh, don't look like me, and my grandchildren don't look like me either. Um, they look like you, <laughs> right? Um, and so we lose that in our generations if people don't talk about that. We all tend to think that the Valley is, you know, all Hispanic or a large percent Hispanics, but we do have um, a lot of presence here, and I'm just very happy that's going to be documented. Um, also on June the 18th, we're going to be having a Juneteenth Jubilee at the city of Edinburgh. Um, we start off at the Rest Lawn Cemetery, where my third cousin happens to be buried. My generations, my, my family's been here for a while, um, and a lot of people don't realize that. Um, Louis Callis, who was the postman for Edinburgh, um, is, is my third cousin. We both grew up in Freeman, Virginia. I think Ellie and I had a conversation about that. Um, and then Pastor Gatlin is going to talk about what's happening in Brownsville. Yes, uh, on June the 16th, the city of Brownsville is hosting its Juneteenth uh, observances with a uh, sponsored event by AARP. I believe it's going to be at the Brownsville Event Center. It's a seated dinner. It's open to the public. Sorry, I happen to be a little taller than she is. Uh, but it is open to the public. Uh, along with that, she mentioned our event on the 11th. I think there's a couple of seats still available. Thank you to the commissioners that are supporting us. We appreciate that. Uh, please come out and join us. There are any number of ways that you can be involved, you can be a part, and you can help us educate. 
So again, just to call out names, sure. thank you. Um, Ellie uh, Torres, Precinct uh, 4, thank you so much. And um, Commissioner Eddie Cantu, thank you so much for your um, support of that event. And thank you to anyone who took my call and heard me out. I do appreciate that as well. So thank you all so much. Commissioner Fuentes, are we ready to move 18? I believe so, Judge. Okay. Thank you. Uh, item 18A, presentation of Rio Grande Valley Metropolitan Planning Organization, the RGV MPO quarterly report. So, Judge, uh, I've had the privilege of being on this board for a few months now, and they've taken some significant actions over the last few months, and I just wanted to get uh, Mr. Ken, the director of the RGV MPO, just to give us a quick summary of the things that have been going on with respect to Hidalgo County, we've had a lot of federal dollars assigned to projects that we've completed and or are under construction. We have a lot of projects that are in the TIP and or very close to the TIP, which is basically the four-year plan where federal dollars or construction dollars are assigned to the projects. It is you know, a critical part of the role that we do to increase mobility uh, or different ways for people to travel around our, our area. And uh, there was, we had a meeting this last week and there were some, some important things that took place. So I just wanted to have Andrew give us a quick summary. Uh, and then we wanted to, I also see Pete is here with, with TechStop. Uh, I'm not sure if they're here for this particular presentation, but I think that there is some traffic changes that are about to occur around the interchange where all that construction is happening. I thought it was important for all of us to know because we're going to have to modify I think the way we travel around here and it's better to get this information out as early as possible. Thank you Andrew and thank and you Commissioner. Uh, for being here yes today. and uh, thank you Pete and Rex are here. I'm the warm up act. <laughs> so in case there's any questions, Commissioner Judge, thank you Andrew Cannon, Executive Director of the RGV MPO. Um, you know, we're coming up on 3 years since the merger and we knew that things or we were at least very very hopeful that things would be fruitful and very beneficial after the merger and i think that it has uh definitely come to light that that's happening here regionally um i'm happy to say that just in hidalgo county alone on our four-year plan we have 102 million dollars in projects for hidalgo county on the plan that are moving forward so uh that's definitely an improvement we're pretty excited and for the remaining six years of our 10-year plan, another $97 million. With, of course, uh, ample opportunities for more dollars, I'm glad to say that uh, my staff was able to be a small part of assistance uh, to Commissioner Fuentes and his staff and uh, assist, and I know that they're moving forward with a grant applica application for $36 million through the Infra and RAISE program, so we're very excited. Um, we've done this for some other local government communities as well, but we're excited to be able to help Commissioner Fuentes and his staff out seeking that. Um, and I certainly don't want to forget that the county is also committed to $115,000 for the active transportation and tourism um, uh, plan that is being headed up by the Low Rio Grande Valley Development Council. So as you can see, it's all encompassing. We have several different modes of transportation, uh, added capacity, uh, sidewalks, trails, um, so we're very excited about that. Oh, and I failed to mention Luis Diaz, my assistant director, is here with me today. Sorry. 
Uh, but uh, we're very excited about, you know, the growth, uh, the additional dollars. We are working with TxDOT now on what is called the UTP, the 10-year plan. It's a new plan that's going to be adopted, uh, we're hopeful, at the end of August. There's some additional dollars on there. There's some additional what we call Category 7 local dollars. Um, off the top of my head, I believe it's about $50 million over 10 years. Uh, so it's not a huge windfall, but it is more money, and there's more Category 2, I believe, coming our way. So the opportunities are there. I think the fruit from the merger and the wisdom that was seen through that uh, and the cooperation, of course, with our elected officials, TxDOT, and the federal government on merging the MPOs has definitely come to be fruitful for us. Um, do we you also, wish to discuss this? Give me one more second. Uh, so we also know that Biden has issued or put out, the, the legislation has put out some money for infrastructure, and there's going to be a lot of money assigned to transportation. As of right now, we don't have any clear direction on that. Is that correct? Not on all of it, no, sir. Yeah. So there's, you know, again, everybody that's more shovel-ready, closer to shovel-ready, usually gets some priority in, priority in that. So just an encouragement to, to keep developing your projects. Um, I know we use a lot of our CO monies to, to participate from the local side, and then we get to the construction and use the federal dollars uh, for the construction. So I encourage everybody to keep an eye out for when those... Um, when that, that direction comes out, and uh, Andrew has been real good about it, but if you ever have any questions about that, you know, feel free to call me or, or Andrew directly to see if there's any further di direction. But we'll make sure to advise the court accordingly when that, when that direction comes out. Yes, sir. On several of those, uh, Federal Highways is still doing what they call rulemaking on a lot of those grants, so we're waiting to see what comes out of that. And as soon as we get uh, the NOFOs, not notice of funding opportunities, we try to, I try to circulate that out to everybody so that you know that they're there. Uh, there are considerable projects in the region that are applying for some of these grants. We have mega grants, which are $100 million. Um, I thought they were set at $500 million, but I think we can go a little bit lower with some of those overall. So that's great for some of the projects that we have. Um, there's also, like with uh, I think what the commissioner is doing, we have some planning grant opportunities which are just going to lead into construction opportunities in the future because then you're going to be able to come back sort of like what we do with our uh, alternative transportation program. You can come get planning dollars. You successfully complete the plan. It's adopted. Hey, now we have a plan and we're seeking those dollars to move forward with the construction phase of it and implementation. So we're very excited about that. Yeah. Thank you. Any questions from anybody? Just one question. Hey, Andrew, what's the the biggest uh, project, TAP project that you have either under construction or, or in the plans that's actually being de developed, just out of curiosity. Are they all small, like um, a million here, two million there? Brownsville has some significant ones. Yeah, I've seen there. Um, that we move forward with. The Southmost Trail project just broke ground. Uh, they're seeking some funding for their uh, connectivity out to the battlegrounds. They have a trail system uh, that's going to connect up with a um, an area that they have that's going to have canoeing, kayaking, and everything but out nobody there. Nobody in Hidalgo County, um, or not nobody, right? But no major projects in Hidalgo County. The ones in Hidalgo, com uh, Commissioner, I would say, are more of completion of connectivity. Uh, they're not the larger ones like you undertook uh, How with your project. How close is the one that connects second to Jackson? We're getting closer every day. We're trying to work out some details. Last uh, get together I had with TxDOT and with the city on it was there is a rail crossing implement of that. So we have to be very careful and we have to negotiate and, or they have to negotiate and work with the, uh, the railroad company for a pedestrian crossing. And I think that sort of threw in an added expense that they weren't quite thinking through when they were doing it. And we went through a similar situation with Donna as well on the project that they had. Uh, I think we're just about there. The exciting thing about that project, I will say, is that it's connecting up two uh, already implemented projects that are there, people are using today. And it does have a private facility facet to it. We have a contractor that's coming in and developing a uh, subdivision, and he's agreed to uh, fill in the gap, if you will, on a large portion of the trail system of that. So that's really great that we have some private dollars going into the completion of that system. Awesome. Tell them to go under the, the railroad track. Uh, I don't even want to think about that. <laughs> you, you were a brave man to go under roadways, so I, I think that's great. So. Thank you, Andrew. 
Yes, sir. I, I think now would be maybe the appropriate time to, to have Pete and staff come up and kind of explain what the traffic flows are going to look like here in the next 30 to 60 days along the interchange, specifically around the southbound and east you know, transitioning to east-west. Uh, Pete, thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Uh, I, we brought, I mean, Andrew was nice enough to bring out a, a map. We also have the display that we can put up on the TV for everybody to reference. Uh, but if you'd like to go ahead and explain what's going to be happening. Good morning, commissioners, judge. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, last week at the MPO meeting, a staff member, David Vera, uh, gave a presentation of some of the upcoming changes uh, that we are foreseeing for the uh, interchange project uh, for I-69E, I-69C and I-2. Uh, a couple things uh, to note, and I jotted down, jot down some notes just to make sure I reiterated the importance of this. There will be no lane reductions as part of this, uh, these changes, the traffic control changes. What does that mean? Our direct connectors, the bridges, uh, currently have one lane. They will remain one lane uh, to allow maneuvers east, west, north, and south. And so one of the things that, that uh, is of importance here is we're almost completing what is called direct connector number four. That is the south uh, west corner, if you will. That's the new bridge that has been, uh, it's almost complete. That bridge is gonna have two lanes, as but, are the excuse, rest. Excuse me, that's the one that connects going southbound to the McAllen Yes, it's south area. to west, that's right. correct, okay. Commissioner. Thank you uh, for that clarification. That bridge, as you know, this project, the scope of the project is to go from one lane to two lane bridges and then enhance operational improvements as a whole. Those two lanes, if you will, on the newly constructed bridge will serve as connectivity points for not only the south to west, but also the south to east. Uh, there will be a slight detour uh, that will be implemented utilizing the Sugar Road underpass on the west side of the interchange to enable maneuvers going from south, that want to go east, they'll have to go west for a little bit, catch that U-turn, merge, if you will, with the main lanes on the eastbound main lanes, and then be on their way. And then lastly, there'll be uh, and some- the traffic lights, Peter, if you don't mind me asking, are, are you gonna synchronize the traffic lights differently or they're gonna stay the same? So there will be no traffic lights. That's the beauty of underneath, this- Underneath the There will road? be no, uh, no traffic lights. That's the beauty of this plan. At the end of the day, we want to have continuous movement uh, the alternative to not doing what we're proposing here would be for people to come to a complete stop with a traffic light that would cause major delays. And so the, the beauty of this uh, initiative, if you will, is to provide an opportunity for continuous movement. Although a little longer in route, it is continuous movement at the end of the day. So for traffic that's going uh, east to want to head north towards Edinburgh, uh, for example, in the, in the future, during phase construction, they will actually exit to Raul Longoria catch the front road, make a U-turn, and then go back onto the main lanes and catch direct connector number one. That's the one that goes west to north. That is also going to be a continuous movement where no signal lights will be introduced. That is a, a key component of this, uh, this whole process to ensure that, that we would minimize the, the delays overall. What's the benefit? At the end of the day, our goal is to complete this project, substantially complete this project. Let me correct myself in the fall of 2023. Substantial completion means that the main lanes in the frontage road would be open, paperwork uh, and things like that would be closing out at the beginning of 2024. These traffic control uh, changes are needed as a whole in order to help continue the, the development of this project. When all is said and done, if you look at the map there, the three red direct connectors, those are three existing direct connectors will be demolished and the new uh, direct connectors two and three will be constructed. The two lane direct connectors bridges would be constructed at that point. I would also like to, to advise you that we do intend to have a press release next week sometime to provide additional information, not only to you, the elected officials, but the tra traveling public as a whole to ensure that we get communication uh, uh, you know, out to, to, the, to the folks. Uh, communication is key, just like partnering. We work very well with our elected officials, uh, local governments, our, uh, the MPO, RMAs, we all are working together to deliver projects in the region. And so that press release will be forthcoming that will provide us additional information uh, as, far, as far as this project is concerned. Our intent is to follow that up with any questions that you all may have. And at this point, I'll pause and see if there are any general questions that I may be able to answer this morning. Just a comment, Pete. I, um, 
for the size of the project, I think that the contractor and, and your staff has done a great, great job. I know it's discomforting, right, to have to do this type of construction, but overall what they've done within the, the parameters that they've had, you know, those, those braided, uh, they're called braided exits or whatever that they're doing in San Juan, to see them already up is, is pretty amazing that they've made that much progress. I think, I think we're lucky that we have uh, that type of contractor working on, on that project. Appreciate those comments, Commissioner. The contractor's working 24-7. Uh, you see them working day and night. Uh, I passed by there uh, the lab in the e late evenings, and they're already working with all those lights and what have you, trying to expedite. And I, I want to reassure you, any location that is available for construction, they're putting their, their folks to work. Uh, I would also like to reiterate that this contractor, although they're from out of town, over 90% of the workforce is from this community, and we're very excited for that because it provides jobs for the region. And it affects me on a daily basis because of where I live, this affects me every day. And, you know, the detours that we take, they still move. You know, it, it feels different. It probably takes three more minutes, four more minutes, but at the end of the day, you're still able to get to where you need to get to pretty timely. I appreciate those, those comments, Commissioner. The, the other thing that came up at the MPO meeting was just because it's going to be su such a significant change in traffic flow, we asked uh, for any information, presentations, animation, uh, be shared with us so that we could share it on our Facebook page, put it on our website, and just try to disseminate this information to all of our constituents. It's probably about 30 days away from this kind of change happening, but I think it's just an important part of educating our constituents as to the changes that are coming forth. So they, they agreed to share that information as it became available. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, the press release information will be provided. Any, any information there will also be shared. I would like to clarify one thing. Uh, we're looking at making three changes in the summer. Uh, mid to late June will be direct connector number four will be open up south to west towards McAllen. Uh, latter part of July would be direct connector number two, which is south to east towards Harlingen, for example, and then co direct connector number three, uh, east to north, uh, would be in the latter part of August. So we're not going to do it all in one shot. We want to make sure the traveling public has time to adjust to these changes. And so we'll be doing uh, mid-June, mid-July, and mid-August is what we're anticipating. But uh, looking forward to that press release to provide you additional information. And again, all of these changes are to continue and expedite the process. So. It's a small inconvenience, but like you said, in the fall of 2023, we should see a much greater uh, mobility potential. Yes, sir. Any additional questions? All right. No, I appreciate you all being here, all of you, um, from the MPO side and from TxDOT side. I thought a lot of important information to share. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, you. Thank you Judge. We'll go back to regular agenda item. 6A, District Attorney's Office. Good morning, Judge Cortez and Commissioner Rosalinda Cantu presenting for the District Attorney's Office. Item 6A, requesting consideration and approval of the Operation Underground Railroad Domestic uh, Law Enforcement Support Mutual Agreement for the donation in the amount of $36,495.50 to the Hidalgo County District Attorney's Office for the purchase of software license equipment used for law enforcement investigations. Motion approved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, item 6P, we will be taking a no action at this time. Item 6C, the DA check fraud fund 1222. We're asking for approval of 2022 appropriation of funds for the DA check fraud fund in the amount of $5,000 to fund software licensed equipment used for law enforcement investigations. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. May I proceed to item 7A, HIDA task force? Yes, go ahead. Item 7A, uh, fiscal year 2020, HIDA task force, task force fund 1291. We're asking for authorization and approval to accept a second extension request on fiscal year 2020, grant number G20SS0002A, HIDA task force grant from June 30th, 2022 through December 31st, 2022. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Item 8A, Sheriff's Office. 
Good morning, Judge and Commissioners. <coughs> Captain David Freeland with the Sheriff's Office. I'll be presenting for Sheriff J. E. Eddie Guerrero. Agenda item 8A in three parts. Part one, requesting authorization and approval to accept grants award from the Office of the Governor, Homeland Security Grants Division in relation to the fiscal year 2021 Operation Stone Garden Grant. Grant number 317207 in the amount of $1,817,000 with authority for county judge as authorized official to accept award and electronically. Part two, authorization to pay overtime reimbursable under the grant terms and conditions. And part three, approval of certification of revenues as certified by the county auditor, fiscal year 2021 Operation Stone Guard Grant in the amount of $1,817,000 and appropriation of same. Motion to approve A, one through three. Session. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 8B, uh, Sheriff's VOCA, 1284, two parts. Part one, we're appro uh, requesting approval of certification of revenues as certified by the county auditor for fiscal year 2022. VOCA in the amount of $6,400 and appropriation of the same. And part two, Approval to adjust grant budgets and more funds for a contingency line item to fund supplies uh, needed for VOCA liaison in the amount of $6,400. So move. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Item 9A, Constable Precinct 4. Good morning, Judge. Uh, commissioners 9A. One, approval to rescind action taken on 419.22. A1-85519 regarding memorandum of understanding between Hidalgo County Constable Precinct 4 and Learning for Life. Uh, 982 discussing consideration and action to approve the revised memorandum of understanding between Hidalgo County Constable Precinct 4 and Learning for Life Explore program with the authorization for County Judge Richard Cortez to execute the MOU. So Second. I have a motion and a second to approve item 9A1 and 2. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Judge Thank you, Constable. Sure. Tax Office, Mr. Villarreal, item 10A. Good morning, Judge. Good morning. Santos Castilla, Motor Vehicle Manager. Good morning, Commissioners. I have item 10A, uh, discussion and approval to execute a dealer deputy agreement between the County of Hidalgo and LF Motors HGN LTD. DBA LF Motors GDN number P115712, DBA LF Motors GDN number P4613X, and DBA LF Motors GDN number P115716. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. I also have 10B. It's a discussion and approval to execute a dealer deputy agreement between the County of Hidalgo and Bird Ogden Cadillac Incorporated. DBA, Bird Ogden Cadillac, GDN number P165358. So moved. Second. Just so the public will be clear, what is a dealer deputy agreement? This is the contract agreement that allows them to, to pretty much uh, issue license plates at the time of sale. It's a, it assists in the title process as well. Okay. It makes it faster. Yes, sir. We have a motion and a second to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. We're going to be going to closed session uh, now. So pursuant to Chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code, we'll be retiring to closed session to discuss items listed in Code Section 551.071, 72, and 74. I have a motion to do so. Motion made. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. It is 1120. Okay, we're back from closed session. We do have some action items to take. Yes, sir. Thank you, Judge. Commissioners, um, if I may, I'm going to go to um, open session. 26A, real estate acquisition appropriation for same. There's no uh, action to be taken or specific action to be taken. 26B, pending under potential litigation. No specific action to be taken. 26C, discussion, consideration, and possible action regarding response to public health emergency. Um, uh, there is an agenda item uh, that I will refer to uh, later. Uh, if I may, I'm going to go to my claims. 26E, claim of Ociel Vasquez, Judge Commissioners, 
I'd like settlement authority to make an offer in the amount of one hundred and sixty dollars. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. Item twenty six F claim of Rose Lee Dorsey. Judge Commissioners, I'd like settlement authority to make an offer in the amount of one thousand sixty six dollars and seventy nine cents. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item G. Um, 26G claim of Ashley Gonzalez, Judge Commissioners. I'd like settlement authority to make an offer in the amount of $411.35. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And Judge Commissioners, uh, item, uh, let me go back to item 26D discussion, consideration, and action regarding employment appointment of budget officer, which is the director of budget and management. I will refer back to agenda item 11. Which is under uh, for uh, through human resources. You can now go back to item 11. Good afternoon, Judge Commissioners. Erika Reina for the Department of Human Resources. Item 11A I'm requesting a waiver of the following if applicable for the personal items listed. I need action on item number two, Hidalgo County Personal Policy Manual, section 6.27. And number three, budget amendment policy, personal related amendments. So move. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 11B for the Department of Budget and Management. B1, discussion, consideration, and action to appoint and or employ the Hidalgo County Budget Officer, also Director of Budget and Management, in accordance with Texas Local Government Code Section 111.062A. The appointee is Mr. Vidal Roman. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 11B2, approval and all appropriate actions to set the compensation for the Hidalgo County Budget Officer, also the Director of the Department of Budget and Management at grade 21, step five. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And judge commissioners with that action being taken then for the record uh, my um, my status as interim budget officer uh, is no longer effective the date of his hire I'm sorry effective today or the day he starts uh, uh, it would be uh, effective uh, the, the day that he starts okay okay just go on to the next one Item 11C for the Information Technology Department, approve to award a discretionary step for the employee listed below after approval of HR criteria certification with section 8.03 of the classification and compensation plan. This is effective the next full pay period, June 6, 2022. And it is a request for a discretionary step two for slot 0039 and application developer three. Everything is in accordance with policy. I do recommend approval. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 11D for ARPA, approval to award a discretionary step for the employee listed below after approval of HR criteria certification with section 8.03 of the classification and compensation plan effective upon commissioner's court approval. This is also a discretionary step two for slot 0012, a contract specialist two currently working on ARPA projects. Everything is in accordance with policy. So move. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 11E for the Human Resources Department. Approve the following personal actions effective upon commissioner's court approval. Judge commissioners, as you know, the HR department has been undertaking new operations. We have uh, reorganized some of our divisions and some of the new services that we are providing include job audits, job analysis, review of all the county job descriptions, exit interviews, turnover analysis, and various web-based programs. So given this, I am requesting authorization to delete a vacant slot, which is slot 0005, a claims investigator one at a grade 11, and create a new slot at zero, slot 0020, a human resources specialist three, grade 10, this will help us be better structured to address all of the new services being provided. And Judge Commissioners, before any action is taken, Ms. Fern McClarity. 
Fern McClarity? Thank you. So, because she had some uh, uh, public participation for her, but she is not present. Okay, I am requesting approval. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item 11F for Precinct 2 Parks. Approval to create a temporary part time position for 11 weeks beginning May 31st, 2022 and ending August 14, 2022. This is to create temporary slot T077, an athletic trainer at a grade nine. And this position will be assisting with summer operations and current workload. I do recommend approval. Judge Commissioners, again, for the record, we did receive a public participation form uh, from Ms. Fern McClarity, but she is not present. Second. We have a motion and second to approve. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Item 11G for Precinct 3 from Road and Bridge Fund. Approve the following personal actions effective upon Commissioner's Court approval. Requesting to delete slot 0007 and Executive Assistant 2 at a grade 13 and create slot 0126 and Executive Assistant 1 at a grade 11. This item does result in a cost savings. I do recommend approval. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 11H for the health department, approve the following personnel actions effective the next school pay period, June 6, 2022. I am requesting to delete two slots, 0015, a public health specialist one at grade nine and slot 0024, an animal control specialist one at a grade four and create slot 0068, an accounting clerk one at a grade six and this is to best address the department needs at this time. I do recommend approval. Motion to approve. Second. Judge All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And for the record, we did have a public participation form uh, for Ms. Farmer Clarity, but she is not present. Item 11I for ARPA, approval to extend the following time limited positions effective July 1st, 2022 through December 31st, 2022. The action here is to extend two time limited positions, which are slot 0010 and 0011, COVID-19 clerk ones at a grade one, and these clerks are necessary to assist with our operations at the county courthouse. I do recommend approval. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And again, Judge Commissioners, there was a public participation form for Ms. Farmer Clarity, but she is not present. Item 11J for Indigen Defense, approval to extend the following temporary full-time positions beginning July 1st, 2022 and ending December 31st, 2022. These are to extend two temporary full-time positions, slots T010 and T011, eligibility specialists at a grade six, and these positions will continue to assist with jail cases. I do recommend approval. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Judge Commissioners, for the record, there was a public participation form submitted by Ms. Firma Clarity. She is not present. Item 11K for the 449th District Court. Approval of the following personnel action effective upon Commissioner's Court approval. The action here is to re uh, reclassification of slot 0006, a bailiff from a current grade of 10 to a proposed title of bailiff one at a grade 11. Judge Commissioners, this is in accordance with the classified position list. The employee has now met the requirements and we do recommend approval of this reclassification. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 11L for the District Attorney's Office. Approval of the following personnel actions effective upon Commissioner's Court approval. Requesting to remove the supplemental allowance from slot 0027 and Assistant District Attorney 3 in the amount of 10,501 and to add the supplemental allowance to slot 0029 and assistant district attorney five in the same amount. There is no fiscal impact. I do recommend approval. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 The motion carries. Item 11 L2 approve the following personnel actions effective upon commissioner's court approval. I'm requesting to delete the position and the auto allowance for an assistant district attorney three at a grade 17 with a $900 allowance amount 
and slot 0171, also an assistant district attorney three with the same grade and allowance, and to create slot 0219 an assistant district attorney four at a grade 19 with an auto allowance of $900 and slot 220, same title, uh, grade and allowance. I do recommend approval. These will assist the district attorney's office with the management of more complex cases. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Have a great Thank afternoon. You. Item 12A, Mr. Arbeland, Urban County. Good afternoon, Judge uh, Commissioners. For item 12A, requesting approval of a First Amendment to the 2020 Home Community Housing Development Organization Program Agreement between Hidalgo County, Urban County Program, and Proyecto Azteca, Inc. The proposed amendment to the agreement would allow for a 12-month contract extension. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And for item 12B, approval of a proclamation declaring 2022 Home Ownership Month with the County of Hidalgo. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank, Thank you, Judge Mr. Commissioner. Mr. Levadas, 1113. Good morning. I mean, good afternoon, Irene Rangel with the Health, Department, Health and Human Services. Item 13A1 discussion, consideration approval to draw down funds for the comprehensive hospital increase reimbursement program payment year two advanced IGT in the amount to be determined by the Health and Human Service Commission um, instructions from the local provider participation fund with a transfer date of June 15th and a settlement date of June 16th. Motion to Requesting approve. approval. Take it. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, item B is approval of certification of revenues as certified by the county auditors from the LPPF in the amount to be determined by HHSC instructions. So move. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item C approval of appropriation of funds from the LPPF in the amount to be determined by HHSC instructions. So move. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 13 2A discussion, consideration, and approval to draw down funds for demonstration year 11, round one, district payment IGT in the amount to be determined by HHSC instructions from the local provider participation fund with a tentative transfer date of June 14th and a settlement date of June 15th. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item B, approval of certification of revenues as certified by the county auditors from the local provider participation fund in the amount to be determined by HHSC instructions. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item C, approval of appropriation of funds from the local provider participation fund in the amount to be determined by the Health and Human Service Commission final instructions. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you very much. This floor is Head Start Program 14A. Yes, discussion and approval of program calendars for the program year 2022-2023. Nine of the 11 calendars needed are submitted for your approval. The others will be uh, coming at a later meeting. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, item B is discussion approval of amendment to the Hidalgo County Head Start Program's priority guidelines for selection and enrollment. This has to do with children. It's the SNAP program. Um, all the uh, recipients of SNAP are now uh, automatically qualifying for Head Start. We recommend your approval. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. The third one, C, discussion approval to submit a supplemental application for the cost of living adjustment COLA and quality improvement funds, uh, QI funds. Um, we received notification of $667,400 for COLA and $192,040 for um, quality improvement. We're required to have a minimum of 2.28% COLA across the board and uh, that is being uh, submitted. And then uh, we have four positions that we are uh, increasing Instead of 2.28, they will get 4.6%. And those positions are teachers, assistant teachers, support service assistants, 
and disability classroom aides, and those are at the centers because we did have shortages of teachers, assistant teachers, disability aides, and uh, so we found that this uh, would be one way for us to be able to keep our teachers. We had large percentages of turnover. Um, the total, this uh, uh, application is due at the Office of Head Start um, tomorrow. I don't know if you have any questions regarding this, but that's where all the funding went that we received for this purpose. Make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. The next one is discussion and approval of the following Head Start program plans. We have program plans that we must submit to the Office of Head Start and it's required for us to uh, have them reviewed by you as well as with the Policy Council. And so nine of the plans are being submitted. Child nutrition, education, family services, health, human resources, mental health, special services, transition, and transportation. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. The next one is requesting approval of application and certificate for payment for invoice 18221102 in the amount of $24,800 for professional services submitted by Laura Warren, uh, Project Architect, the Warren Group Architects Incorporated through contract C21068308824 for the Hidalgo County Head Start Program, Outdoor Learning Environments and Discovery Classrooms. This is um, based on, on what work has been done. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. The next one is discussion and approval of request to enter into a five year uh, revised um, re, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, re reinstated memorandum of understanding for school readiness partnership model between Delgo County and La Jolla Independent School District. Uh, we have two campuses that we're moving into, or we have moved into Seguin and we'll be moving into San Fordyce. And so we are recommending approval of, of this new MOU. Motion to approve. Second. And what was the revision again? It was revised okay. for what? Yes, uh, the, the MOU is now the classrooms are going to be held in, uh, in uh, campuses that belong to the school district. So we're moving for, for Sam Fordyce, we're moving from our Sullivan Head Start Center in Sullivan into Sam Fordyce. And then uh, in Seguin, we moved from Western Road into Seguin Elementary. It's the location of our services. So does that mean that you're abandoning the building that we have there in Sullivan? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, so, are, are, um, go ahead. I heard that you all were moving into maybe requiring cameras in the classrooms. Is that correct? Yes, sir. We, we have always had cameras in our classrooms that are Head Start uh, buildings, but it has been difficult for us to get them installed in campuses that we are with the school district. We're trying to put it into our uh, contracts because, into our MOUs, because uh, we believe that it's for the safety of our children and the protection of our employees that we're able to record what happens in the classrooms. Um, what we have uh, found is that in the campuses that we're in in the school districts, it's not that the district will not allow it. It's just that we've never been able to finalize, you know, uh, that we're going to move in there and and get the cameras installed. But uh, that is part of the process that we're working on to make sure that we have uh, cameras in every classroom, including those that are held in uh, classrooms that are in uh, campuses that belong to the school district. And Ms. Flores, did you uh, send this notification? on on the building that you were using here in in, uh, in our offices in uh, Sullivan City that you were not gonna uh, use it anymore? We have two buildings there, but we have not sent notification related to them. One of them is being used and the other one, we use it for, um, we do have stored um, uh, supplies and, and materials and, and uh, our uh, maintenance workers go out there and do some work too. But no, we have not sent notification of uh, abandoning that one yet. Uh, we have not abandoned that one yet. Uh, but okay? uh, by by approving this motion, uh, you would need to, your intention is to abandon this building, right? Okay, the building that we're planning to abandon is the one in, in Sullivan. Yes, that is in the part, it's, uh, it's in the county property, the one that's on the expressway. Right. Correct. Right. Is that you're asking about that? Yes, I'm asking by approving 
the the MOU uh, yes. that you're requesting, uh, uh -huh. your intention is to uh, leaving this facility that you're currently using right now that right. belongs to the county. Right, right. It it is a facility that we will no longer be uh, at this particular point. We don't have plans for it, but it does have a federal interest. That in order for us to totally turn it over anywhere, we have to go through the process of getting permission for for us to be able to do that, okay? Now, how so all, Yes. How would that uh, better serve uh, our children uh, uh, by moving from the expressway that, that might be a little bit more uh, convenient to that other location that is further, I mean, for Dice, well, it's, it's uh, going towards uh, uh, Los, uh, Los Evanos, right? Right, it's, it's about a, what, a couple of blocks away from the expressway? Yes. Yes, um, what happens there, sir, is that, that the building, um, well, first, the La Jolla Independent School District was very interested in having us there, okay? And, uh, and uh, to do that, it helps us in, in, her, in terms of the children and being able to transition into the regular school setting. But more importantly, it has to do with the condition of the building, uh, one part of the building, the, the floor is in really bad shape. And so it'll take, you know, funds for us to be able to uh, uh, fix it, repair it, and keep it in in, uh, in, uh, in usable condition. So where we're moving, it's a newer building. It's a, it's a building that is um, uh, very well uh, equipped, you know, for our children. And um, it is not that far from where we are. We will continue to provide the transportation that will be necessary for us to bring the children over, and uh, and so uh, it would it would help us in that we no longer would have to be dealing with uh, uh, keeping and maintaining that particular building as well as having to repair it and and put it up to uh, standard because there's a section in there that's in really bad shape that would need to be fixed if we were to do anything with it. Now the uh, for uh, the the your intention with the four dice uh it's at no cost uh to the head start exactly Correct? exactly no cost no maintenance cost no uh uh utilities cost um we have our own custodian to clean the building and everything but all the maintenance costs transfer over to the district and so uh that is going to be also a savings that happens at every time we've moved into a, a public school building. Okay. You're absolutely right. It is a big savings to us. Okay. I believe we had a motion to approve. No second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Discussion, uh, next one, and uh, approval of request to enter into a five-year revised and reinstated memorandum of understanding MOU for school readiness partnership model SRPM between Hidalgo County Head Start Program and West Lico Independent School District, Rudy Silva Elementary School, and Migro Elementary Campuses. The same situation here. Uh, in fact, it helps us um, to uh, consolidate some classrooms. We have a building that we're using in uh, Westlaco that we've been renting for a very big amount of money. I believe it was like $3,500 a month. It's an old building by the highway. Um, the district approached us and in moving into Rudy Silva and Margo with uh, the commitment to also help us with transportation to be able to move the children into these places. Um, the one uh, other building that we would be abandoning there is um, a building that, that we pay a little bit of rent. It's the housing. Um, and, and that particular one uh, is not in bad shape, but it is a smaller building. But um, the district is inviting us to be a part of their, of their uh, district and moving the, the children into classrooms so that we will have two campuses um, that would have, that would be, uh, one would be smaller than the current one that we have there in, uh, in Westlaco, and the other one would grow by about two classrooms. We, I believe we will have uh, four and four classrooms in each one of them. And so it's going to help us. Um, again, we won't have to pay that. I think we're paying $500 a month for the other building, but this one that we pay a big chunk of money, it's gonna help us save um, a lot of money. Motion to approve. Okay. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 
The next one is uh, approval to disburse a lump sum summer paycheck to staff who resigned as of the last summer leave day, the last working day for the position assigned. This helps us if a teacher is planning to resign come the first day of school, it would help us if they would resign earlier and, uh, and let us know and that way we'd be able to uh, work on the vacancies um, in a timely manner. So this is to help us to keep our, our staffing. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Lotus. Thank you all very, very much. Mr. Longoria, Community Service Agency, 15A. Is Jaime there? Okay, let's, let's go to elections. Okay. Somebody call them, please. Yes, sir. Uh, do I go ahead and go on? Yes, go ahead. Ms. Okay. 16A. Good afternoon, Judge and Commissioners. Yvonne Ramon with item 16A on discussion on election updates. So we've got so much happening right now with elections. So if uh, any of you or the community that's listening, if you have any questions, the first place to start, of course, is on our website. Visit www.hidalgocounty.us forward slash elections. There you can view sample ballots by using our sample ballot lookup tool. If you are a mail ballot voter, you can track your mail ballot activity with our mail ballot activity lookup tool. Both are very user friendly and provide vital, very, very vital information. Now, you may be someone who is saying, I don't have a computer access. Well, you can call us at 318-2570. We will assist you. We will help you pro and by providing any information that you may need or come on by. We are at 213 South Closter Boulevard here in Edinburgh. Now, as I mentioned, there are so many different elections happening and happening soon. So I'm gonna divide up the county into two sections for easier understanding. We'll start off with the Western part of our county. We have two local runoff elections that started today. We've got the city of Mission that has a mayoral race and a council member place one race. And then we have the city of Palmview also has a mayoral race. Early vote started today and it's gonna run seven days. So it starts today and runs through Tuesday, June 7th with election day on Saturday, June 11th. Now, you know we're countywide. So what does that mean for these two races? That means that if you are a voter from the city of Palmview and you find yourself in mission, your Palmview ballot will be in any of the locations in mission. Vice versa, the same. If you are a mission voter and you find yourself in Palmview, well, you know what? Your ballot will be there as well. We've got three early vote locations and five election day locations uh, with these two local elections that are taking place. Now let's head over to the Eastern part of Hidalgo County. And we know that Governor Abbott called a special election for Congressional District 34. And this was to fill the vacancy that was created by the resignation of Honorable Philemon Vela. Now, this is very important. And I already mentioned it two weeks ago, I sent out a press release, but for those that still don't understand or haven't heard, who can participate in this special election? Well, it's gonna be those voters that were registered in this district while Filimon Vela was elected and in the uh, District 34. Those are the voters that can vote in this election. So the governor ordered us to redraw this old District 34 into the original jurisdictional area that right now doesn't really exist anymore because we changed those boundary lines, but we have been ordered to redraw it and we have approximately 58,000 voters that qualify to vote in this election. I checked about 30 minutes ago and we had under 30 voters that had participated thus far. So perhaps people are not aware that this is happening. And so it's important that anyone that has a question call us and find out, do I qualify to vote? The best way that I can describe it is if you have your old orange card, it's already expired. But if you have this orange card and it shows that you were registered in District 34, more than likely you can vote. But if you have your new blue card and you were not registered in 34 prior to January of 2022, you may not qualify to vote. 
So even though your new card shows 34, if you were not registered prior to redistricting of 2022, you may not qualify. So the best thing is call us 318-2570, find out if you qualify. And we've got early voting happening right now. And so it's very, very important that everyone get out to vote. Now, those days for early voting go on a little longer. They start today, uh, Tuesday, May 31st, but they, uh, they don't end until Friday. Let me get that in front of me. Uh, June 10th with election day happening on Tuesday, uh, June 14th. So different schedules because there are different types of elections. Best thing is go on our website and find out if you qualify to vote in any of these elections. So any questions so far? Okay, let's go ahead and talk about polling locations. I've had several calls regarding the selection of polling locations for this special election, District 34. So in general, when we start to look for recommendation of polling sites to take to commissioner's court, we start off with our base. We've got 28 early vote locations that our community is used to going to. We've been using them for many, many years. They've been assessed, they've been uh, deemed to be accessible to all voters and, uh, and we have great rapport with those locations. So what we found off right off the bat is that two of our very, very main polling sites that are located in Wesico and Mercedes were, were polling locations that were not longer in the old District 34. Now, Texas Election Code 43.004C states that in order to be a polling location within a district like 34, then that polling location must be in that uh, district, must be within those boundary lines, and these two polling locations were not. The majority of the voters, the majority of those 58,000 voters are located south of the expressway, south uh, in the south part of, of the, the eastern part of our county. Not all voters, because you've got, for example, San Juan, where it does go up into the northern part, but the majority were located in the southern area. So my team that specializes in finding and assessing polling sites selected and recommended to use Stephen F. Austin, which by the way is our, one of our uh, uh, sites for election day that we usually use. And uh, this is a familiar election day site for our voters. So could we have used Stephen F. Austin for early voting? And the answer is yes. It could have been recommended to commissioner's court to select that as well. Uh, so why wasn't it? Well, the team that recommended these uh, consolidation of poll locations expressed to me that it was because it has very little parking. It, the, the, the area around the polling location is mainly private uh, property, and that creates um, a, a security concern as far as electioneering and as far as those migrant children that still attend Stephen F. Austin. So they felt that election day which is one whole day instead of the the early vote period would be the recommendation as it has always been recommended in the past so historically we've used Stephen F. Austin only for election day and that was how it was recommended to our court so Mercedes Mercedes in this old district that has been recreated has around 600 voters that qualify to vote in this election. <coughs> and they felt that Progreso is about seven miles away from this area and they felt that they could be served uh, with voters going into uh, the Progreso area. Now, Westlaco during early vote is not even four miles away from Donna. So they felt that Donna uh, again, we've got Alamo, uh, Sergeant Fernando de la Rosa Library, and Donna, we have Amigos del Valle. In Progreso, we have our Progreso Family Community Center. San Juan has the San Juan Memorial Library. And then for election day, we added in the Stephen F. Austin. So the team felt that those four early vote locations could serve the community well. And that was the recommendation that we submitted, and these are the reasons why. Now, it is important to note, though, that because Westlaco and Mercedes are very uh, well-known uh, polling locations, we do have signage that, not just because it's required by law, but because we've always done it. We put signage at these locations in case a voter does arrive 
thinking that they can vote there and the information on the signage is leading them to the other locations in which they are able to vote. So to recap, very important that, like I said, 25 voters thus far, we really need people, those 58,000 voters to know if they do qualify to vote and where the early vote locations are, keeping in mind that election day will be Tuesday, June 14th. So we start today and we go through the 10th of June for early vote. And then election day is Tuesday, June 14th, not the same as the local races that are taking place right now. Now I'm available for any questions that our commissioners and judge may have. Any questions? Thank you very much, uh, Devon. Yes, sir. Thank you. Is uh, Jaime back? He should be on now, Judge. We're going to go back to item 15A, Mr. Longoria. There he is. Jaime? Jaime. Yes, um, good afternoon. This is Mari on um, behalf of Mr. Longoria. Okay, go we ahead, have, Marty. We have discussion and consideration on possible action to accept amendment number two for the fiscal year 2021 community service block grant disaster relief supplement on contract 612-0000-3565 from Texas Department Community Affair with authorization for Mr. Jaime Longoria to sign any and all uh, documents. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ms. Arredondo, item 17A. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, Judge Commissioners. TJ Arredondo with the Planning Department. Item 17A, 1A, B, C, and D are requests for final approval with financial guarantees. The financial guarantees are for the following. AHA Vasquez subdivision, $1,500 for a one septic tank system. Island Manor uh, phase two, $28,500 for 19 septic systems. Kingdom Estate subdivision, $66,000 for 44 septic tanks and Carrizales two subdivision, 18,000 for 12 septic tanks. We recommend approval, approval for all four. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. That's 112 lots, I think. Yes, sir. So the next 12 subdivisions are up for final approval. Items 17A, 2A through L are listed as follows. TSM Ovaya subdivision, precinct four, one lot. Ivalek Subdivision, Precinct 3, one lot. Center Point and Alamo Road Subdivision, Precinct 4, one lot. Chavez de los Santos Subdivision, Precinct 1, two lots. Replats, replat of lots 2, 3, and 4, Troy Subdivision, Precinct 1, three lots. Western Oaks, Phase 2, Precinct 3, 15 lots. La Villita Estates, number 2, Precinct 4, 43 lots. Eduardo's, number 19, Precinct 3, 85 lots. Pleasant View Estates, Precinct 151 lots. Ensenada Estates, Precinct 472 lots. Pueblo de Palmas, Phase 25, Precinct 4, 140 lots. And Del Rey Estates, Unit number 4, Precinct 4, 141 lots. We recommend approval for all 12. Valde. Someone, hold on. Second. Hold on. I think he's got oh. I need to abstain. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. Judge commissioners, uh, uh, commissioner Villarreal will be abstaining from any discussion and or action, uh, regarded, uh, regarded, I'm sorry, regarding, uh, that sub the, uh, subdivision, Wh which one, and oh, sir, which, one? which one letter F. 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 Yes. I make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. You want to Thank you. Move for item F. Make a motion to approve F. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries that the record reflect that Commissioner yeah, I'll abstain from voting. So just just so it's clear for the record, the item that was taken was to approve items 2A through 17A. 17. K. L. Sorry. K. But 
Okay, I think that concludes uh, everything, Mr. Orlando. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. 20A, next, I believe. I think 19B. 19B, I believe. 19B. Oh, okay, that's right, 19B. Uh, requesting approval to name a 30-foot private road access easement along Lot 8, Block 238, Texas Mexican Survey, Hidalgo County, Texas, as Mercy Service Road for 911 purposes, as recommended by the LRGVDC 911 Department. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Good morning. Good afternoon, Judge Commissioners. Ray Salazar, Department of Budget and Management. Item 28, if I may have authority to approve. Go ahead. Item 28, approval to submit a request for unclaimed capital credits from the Texas Comptroller of Public Accounts as authorized under Section 74.602 of the Texas Property Code with authority for the county judge to sign the letter request. So moved. Second. We have a motion to second to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 20B, discussion, consideration, and approval of a contribution and aid construction agreement for electric distribution service with AEP for the installation of streetlights in La Quietude subdivision. So Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item 20C, ARPA grant, discussion, consideration, and action to approve the use of ARPA relief funds for the acquisition and implementation of software that will provide visibility to the network infrastructure and secure data communications to assist with county functions and compliance with public health measures related to the ongoing COVID-19 public health emergency. ARPA project number 22-200-093. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 20C2, Discussion, consideration, and action to approve the use of ARPA relief funds for the Mission ISD Youth Wellness Camps. This project intends to improve the overall wellness of students participating and to respond to the mental health disparities caused by the ongoing COVID-19 public health emergency. ARPA project number 22-110-086. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Judge Commissioners, for the record, there was a public participation form Submitted by Ms. Firmer Clarity, she is not present. Thank you. Item 20C3, discussion, consideration, and action to approve the use of ARPA relief funds for the La Jolla ISD Youth Wellness Camps. This project intends to improve the overall wellness of students participating and to respond to mental health disparities caused by the ongoing COVID-19 public health emergency. ARPA project number 22-110-085. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Judge Commissioners, for the record, there was a public participation form submitted by Ms. Former Clarity on this agenda item. She is not present. Thank you. Item 20C4, discussion, consideration, and approval to amend the memorandum of understanding between Medicare EMS and the County of Hidalgo, previously approved under the Hidalgo County American Rescue Plan Act Emergency Medical Service Program on Commissioner's Court December 14, 2021. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item 20D1 for Constable Precinct 4, approval of the 2022 appropriation of fund balance for Constable Precinct 4, Chapter 59, in the amount of $156,000. Motion approved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank, Thank you, Judge. May we have a drum roll for the purchasing department. Good afternoon, Judge Commissioner for the Auto and Mileage Purchasing Department. Item 21A1, requesting approval of supplemental number one to contract number 21-0435-0921 with Saints Inc. to amend the agreement to clarify the method of payment with respect to work authorizations submitted by engineer providing the agreed upon services and to clarify the work authorization procedure. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 21A2, requesting approval of supplemental number two to work authorization number seven for contract number 17243-0905 with B2Z Engineering LLC to amend the decreased project total cost and to replace exhibit D, fee schedule with the revised document as attached and detailed herein. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 
Item 2183A, request and approval following change order in connection with the procurement installation of movable furniture and other items for the new courthouse from vendor, the Cap Rock Group, LLC, DBA, Texas Wilson, change order number 005, CPR, <clears throat> furniture 2.1, furniture additions, in the amount of 104,795.48. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And item B, requested authority for county judge and or Valde Guerra executive officer to sign required documents. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 21B1A, requesting exemption from competitive bidding requirements under Texas Local Government Code 262.024A4, professional service. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. B, presentation of scoring grid for the purpose of ranking by commission court of the firms graded and evaluated under pursuant to agenda item A5860 dated 5-17-2022 through the county's approved pool of professional engineering services. The following are the ranking B2Z engineering total 478, SAMES 468, and Bettis Consulting Engineers 451. Does the court wish to reckon the, in the order presented? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And C, authority for the purchasing department to negotiate a professional service agreement with number one ranked firm of B2Z Engineering for professional engineering services for the feasibility and needs assessment study for an animal control facility. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 21 B 2 A requested approval of the following change order for Econ Group LLC under contract number 21. 2290907 as recommended by, by project manager B2Z Engineering LLC in connection with the construction of the new Precinct 4 Justice Center. The following is uh, the original contract sum is 4022100 with a change order of credit of 144 Bradley 5251 to toilet tissue dispenser with a, uh, and uh, balance of upgrade to emergency generator in the amount of 6486.10. Total add to contract uh, under the change order would be 6,346.10 for a new total contract sum of 4,032,446.10. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And B, requesting authority for county judge to sign required documents. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Judge, commissioners, uh, Mr. Elmares, uh, I just yes. want to, for the record, uh, uh, just uh, state that. Uh, Item um, 21B1, B, the ranking and the scores that were read out. Uh, the scores were uh, updated as there was one, uh, one document uh, that was, uh, that was uh, left out. Uh, we did receive it Friday. Uh, so again, but the rankings did not change or the scores did not change the rankings. That's why there's a different or that's why there's updated uh, scores. As a matter of clarification. Yes, as a matter of clarification. Okay. Sorry about that. Thank you, Mr. Renovis. Yes. 21B3A, requesting acceptance and approval of the proposal submitted, proposal submitted by Johnson Controls Inc. in the total amount of 78,702.60 through TIPS cooperative contract number 2201061 for HVAC automation control systems to the new Justice Center located in Precinct 4. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And B, requesting authority to submit Justin Controls Rider to HVAC installation agreement for agreement less than 250000 as requested by vendor JCI to make part of the purchase agreement to ensure the key risk provisions are equitable, reasonable, and consistent with the marketplace. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 21C1A, uh, requesting exemption from competitive bidding requirements in Texas Local Government Code 262.024A4, a personal service. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carried. Aye. And B, acceptance and approval of personal service agreement and fee schedule for consulting services related to county planning and economic development services with I need to make a correction and um, replace Mike Bettis with MRP Consulting Services LLC, subject to HB 1295 and accord insurance. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 21D1, requesting authority to advertise a procurement packet for the Hargill Solar Lights Project in precinct number one, including 
the re-advertising if applicable. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 21D2A, requesting authority to reject sole bid received for request for bids 2021-0795-0427 for lease of parcel for citizens collection site Mercedes area due to alternate location not meeting specifications. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And B, requesting authority to advertise with approved, uh, approval of request for bid procurement packet as attached here too. For lease of parcel for citizens collection site Mercedes area, including the re-advertising if applicable. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 21E1A requesting exemption from competitive bidding requirements under the Texas Local Government Code Section 262.024A4 professional services. So Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And be presenting a scoring grid for the purpose of ranking by commissioners for the firms graded and evaluated to the county approved full professional services or on cost surveying services for projects located within precinct number two. The following are the rankings Kane Lindsay LLC 98, Quintanilla Hetley and Associates Inc. 97, and Saints Inc. 96. Does the court wish to rank in the order presented? So moved. Taken. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And C, requesting authority for the Dallas County Purchasing Department to negotiate a professional surveying services agreement commencing with the number one ranked firm of Kane and Zay LLC for the provision of on-call surveying services for projects with increasing number two. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 21 F1, presentation of qualified sole response received from Big D Tractor Company LLC, DBA Blue Cat Rentals for the purpose of award through RFP 210893. Purchase of use of new gravel brush loader. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 21 G1A requesting acceptance and approval of the final negotiated professional service agreement with LNG Consulting Engineers Inc. in connection with the Hidalgo County Precinct 4 Mile 17 Road Stormwater Project subject to final legal approval. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And be pursuant to Commissioner's Court Approval of Professional Engineering Service Agreement with LNG Consulting and Engineers Inc. Requesting approval of work authorization number one in the amount of 54,976.64 to provide professional engineering services for Hidalgo County Precinct number four, mile 17 road, stormwater project. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 21 G2A requesting exemption from competitive bidding requirements under Texas Local Government Code Section 262.024, A4 Professional Services. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And B, presentation and approval of the scoring grid for the purpose of ranking by commissioners for the firms graded and evaluated to the county's approved for professional services for CMT geotechnical services for Rio Grande. Care Road Stormwater Project located within Precinct 4. The following are the rankings. Rabba Kisner, Inc., 294. Earth Company, LLC, 281. HVJ Associates, 279. Does the court wish to rank in the order presented? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And C, authority for the purchasing department to negotiate a professional service agreement with number one ranked firm, Rabba Kisner, Inc., to provide construction material testing services for the Rio Grande Care Road Stormwater Project located within precinct number four. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 21 G3A requesting exemption from competitive bidding requirements under Texas Local Government Code Section 262.024, A4 Professional Services. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. B, presentation and approval of scoring grid for the purpose of ranking by commissioners for the firms graded and evaluated the county's approved pool of professional services for CMT Geotechnical Services for Colonia Tejana Stormwater Project, 83rd Road to 87th Street, located within precinct number four. The following are the rankings. Millennium Engineering Group, 294. Terracon, 286. LNG Engineers, 280. Does the court wish to rank in the order presented? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And C, authority for the purchasing department to negotiate a professional service agreement with the number one ranked firm, Millennium Engineering Group, to provide construction material testing for the Colonia Tejana Stormwater Project, 83rd Road to 87th Street, located within precinct number four. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 
21 G4 requesting acceptance and approval of final negotiated agreement under contract number 22004405531 to award the number one ranked firm, the 5125 company, in the amount of 1888888 as the CSP general contractor for the Terry Road Stormwater Project located in precinct number four. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 21H1, approval to award to the best qualified bidders for the purchase of mosquito control chemicals under request for bids number 21075840420 JLC, subject to final legal approval. The following are the vendors at APCO LLC, Clark Mosquito Control Pro Products LLC, ES APCO USA LLC DBA Series, and rent -to kill North America Inc. DBA Target Specialty Products. So this is a multiple awards contract. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. 21 H2, presentation of qualified sole response received from Quest Diagnostics Clinical Laboratories, Inc. for the purpose of award of contract via RFP title laboratory services under contract number 2107 940531. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. 21 I1 recommend award to the lowest or most responsible bidder meeting all requirements specifications of Saldua and Associates for RSQ 220240 online credit recovery DD life coaching and tutoring services. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. 21 J1 requesting approval to award fire alarm and security monitoring services under request for bid 22007-0511 KNG. Two superior alarms with the lowest responsive responsible vendor meeting all specifications. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. 21K1 requesting acceptance and approval to award job order contractor Aircon LLC through our membership with Byboard job member contract 581-19 in the amount not to exceed 161,015.27. Fee includes payment and performance bonds for the sheriff's perimeter fence repairs. Move to approve. Second. All, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 21K2 requesting approval to enter into a, an interlocal cooperation agreement to lease space at the Idaho County Sheriff's Office Bravo Substation to Texas Alcoholic Beverage Commission TABC for a term of three years with the option to renew one year term. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Judge commissioners. Mr. Belmares, if I may, please. Yes. Judge Commissioners, for the record, we do have a public participation form from Ms. Firma Clarity. Uh, she is not present. Go ahead, Mr. Belmares. 21L1, discussion, consideration, and possible action to renew for an additional six months an agreement with NMS Labs, a prior exempt service presented in AI 83952 on 12-28-2021, and utilize the current list pre price fee schedule effective through December 31st, 2022. Services include various post-mortem toxicology reports on an as basis through submission of analysis, requisition, and chain of custody form as provided and requested by the vendor, subject to compliance uh, of HB 1295. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Judge Commissioners, if I may, item uh, 22A under Executive Office presentation for discussion of the following. Uh, there's uh, no action to be taken on uh, one new courthouse project updates, two uh, update on county owned building construction relocation and renovation repair projects, no action to be taken. Uh, and 22A3 emergency situations occurrence of last agenda meeting. Uh, there's nothing uh, or no action to be taken this week. Item 22B. Discussion, consideration, and action to authorize County Judge and or Executive Officer to sign letter of intent for the purchase of real property. So move. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And 22B2, discussion, consideration, action to authorize County Judge and or Executive officer, officer to negotiate and execute a real estate purchase contract or contracts. So move. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Judge Commissioners, for the record, there was a public participation form on items 22B1 and 2 uh, by Ms. Firma Clarity, but she is not present. Item 22C, requesting approval of easement and right of I'm sorry, let me start again. Requesting approval of easement and right of way with AEP for the new Justice Center in Edinburgh and authority for county judges signed documents. So 
So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 22D is discussion, consideration, and action on Texas Border Coalition membership. Judge Commissioners, we did receive correspondence with respect to the uh, coalition and uh, membership uh, on behalf of Hidalgo County. Uh, Judge, would you like to elaborate? Yes, I, rec I, I recommend uh, membership, but I recommend membership at, at a reduced rate of 10. So moved. Take it. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And so, Judge Commissioners, for the record, that would be a membership in the amount of $10,000. Uh, item 22, uh, or I'm sorry, item 23, discussion, consideration, possible action regarding A, County Response to Disaster Health Emergency, One CARES Act, and American Rescue Plan funds. There's no specific action to be taken. Item 23B, measures necessary to preserve public health and safety. There's no specific action under this item to be taken as there's been some uh, other action taken. 23C, direction regarding county government operations, including but not limited to essential functions. Judge Commissioners, we continue to follow uh, CDC recommended guidelines uh, in addressing uh, any issues related to the pandemic. Uh, we continue to work with facilities management in addressing uh, any facilities issues uh, with our departments and elected offices. Again, the health and safety of our residents doing business with the County of Hidalgo is first and foremost, as well as the, uh, the employees of the county that uh, provide that valuable service. Judge Commissioners, um, we have gone to closed session item 24 and uh, have come out and we have addressed all the open session items by way of 26A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. For the record, there is no action to be taken on, on agenda item 25A and 25B. And there is no action to be taken on item 27 uh, and no action on item 28. Judge Commissioners, we do have adjournment. I have a motion to adjourn. Motion made. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>